What's good, y'all? My good old Americans out there. Hard-working, amazing folks. They told us to look up David Goggins. Y'all know who that is? Hell no. He he's a Navy David SEAL. He's, he's a real m boy. He is tough. Real G-Unit he, he be doing crazy stuff. Bro, he like... He's like a motivational He ran like resource. 20 miles with broken feet. Yeah, what? Crazy Was like that, that David Goggin? Yeah, David like, Goggins. Have you seen him before? He's got a show on TV, actually. I'm pretty sure. Oh! Okay. Yeah, he's, he's crazy. Okay, let me see if he got some crazy stuff going. Oh, he is crazy. Okay, all right, Mark is in. Maybe we can find a video on another time about David one day, man. I'm glad. What was he like in the like, he, what was he in? He was a Navy SEAL. <sighs> Navy SEAL. Is just, so it's the difference between a Navy and Navy SEAL? Navy SEALs are in the Navy, but it's like the most elite group. Mm -hmm. My homie in the Navy, man. I'm like, damn, I know he ain't got down. He probably just not a SEAL. Yeah. Yet. Okay, that's crazy. All right, guys, this guy's going to explain, I guess, what goes down in the Navy SEAL. Uh, let's go ahead and get into it, man. Uh, I'm interested y'all seen some more. Military video. I'm Clint Emerson, retired Navy SEAL. I spent time at SEAL Team 3, the NSA, SEAL Team 6. Team 6 was going to guy Osama. Damn. I was no incredible athlete, nor was I some genius. I was your average kid growing up in Texas who just had a lot of passion to go down this path. I was a troublemaker at heart. I still am. And I enjoyed getting in trouble. And uh, But more importantly, I enjoyed not getting caught. <laughs> that somehow extended into an adult profession of roaming the planet, causing trouble, and not getting caught. <laughs> First, you have to take a leap of faith and join the Navy. You have to be willing to be a sailor first before you can be a SEAL. For me, I wanted nothing to do with being a sailor. I wanted nothing to do with those big gray ships. I knew since I was 10 years old, I just wanted to be a SEAL. And so I went in, I was still in college. I joined the Navy, I signed a dotted line, didn't tell my parents, nobody knew I was going until about two weeks before the plane <laughs> took off to go to Chicago. Up at Great Lakes is where you go through boot camp. Boot camp is roughly eight weeks. In about week three or four, and they'll say, hey, who wants to be a SEAL? Who wants to be EOD? That starts the process. They tell you, hey, you need to show up on this morning at this time over at the swimming pool. The first thing you have to do is a swim, then you have to do pull-ups, push-ups, sit-ups, and then you have to do a run. All of which has to be done in a certain amount of time on the swim and the run. And then the push-ups, pull-ups, and sit-ups have to meet a minimum standard. Then from there, you just finish out boot camp. You get orders. And your orders will be either, you know, to an A school, which gives you a MOS or a job that you're going to do in the Navy or you're going to go to BUDS. I had to go to an A school, and I picked the medical route, so I went to Corman School, and so that was an additional three months after boot camp where you learned basic EMT skills and nothing more. Then I went to BUDS, which is in San Diego. First thing they had me do while I was in my dress tough. blues was go hit the surf zone, get wet and sandy, and that is the big welcome to BUDS, and you know exactly where you're at when that happens because the Pacific Ocean is always around 55 degrees. It's cold, getting sandy, is a uh, part of your life from there on out. Every guy has their own anxieties about different challenges they know they're going to face in BUDS. For me, it was a particular section of pull comp, and pull comp is inside of the second phase of training, which is focused all on everything from dive physics to dive medicine, and then, of course, being comfortable in the water. Pull comp is truly testing how comfortable you are underwater while you're breathing on scuba and making sure that you can remain calm in stressful situations. You've got your fans, you've got your mask, you've got all the common equipment and you're just going back and forth along the bottom of a very deep swimming pool known as the combat training no, tank. So and while you're going insane. back and forth, the SEAL instructors are above doing shark attacks. And of course, they wait until they see all the bubbles come out and then they come down, taking your airway, ripping your mask off, maybe thump you in the head, take your weight belt off to mess up your buoyancy, and then start pulling other straps and stuff apart. Once they get done, then it's on you to put yourself all back together again in a proper order. If you don't do it in the right order, well, then you're out. You fail. You have to do all this what? with whatever air you have left in your lungs. And, of course, if you go to the surface, that's considered quitting. So you're out. And this just goes on and that's on hard. until you get to that's the point insane. when they 
do what's called the whammy knot. So you're going back and forth, they strip you down, give you a little bit of a beating, tie your hoses in this huge knot that you know you can't get out. And so you have to sit there and work on it until they come down and give you the okay. The goal is, is make sure you remain calm, conserve your air that you have in your lungs, work the problem. The relief is when they come down, they get face to face with you, mask to mask, and they give you the okay and head to the surface and you know you've passed. It's probably the longest 20, 30 minutes of 20, 30 life. minutes? So as you approach the end of BUDS, uh, you come back from the island, you just start prepping for graduation from BUDS. It does not make you a SEAL. For me, <laughs> you what? graduated, and then I went off to my um, specialty. And so within the SEAL community, guys specialize in specific jobs. Tough. You could be a comms guy, you can be a sniper, you can be an ordnance guy. For me, I was a medic, and so I went to a special operations medical school. Somewhere in the middle of all that, you go to jump school. So jump school is one month army school learning how to be a paratrooper. That's it's all static line war. jumping, meaning I'm hooking up a line to a wire inside an airplane, and I'm either going out a door or going off a ramp, and that line is pulling my parachute out for me so that when I depart the aircraft, the parachute pops up behind me, and you float to the ground usually at 15 feet per second and the landings can be, well, that would be kind of fun. sometimes interesting Man, you, you know, hit the and then when you're done with that you, hard, you check bro. into a seal team i checked into seal team three and once you check in you're on a probationary period where your peers are watching you and ensuring that you are the kind of guy they want to work with you have to prove yourself Part of proving yourself is the Chiefs Board and walkthroughs. The Chiefs Board, they can ask you any question they want about being a SEAL, about the equipment you use, how fast does a 5.56 five, round travel, you know, what's the velocity of 20 feet per second. <laughs> they if they ask you anything under the sun, and you better answer it accurately, or you have to do it all over again. And when you're at a SEAL team, you only get so many tries before they get rid of you. Even though they've invested all of that time, money, they don't care because they want to always maintain the best guys in their it's team. Really? Now you go to ordnance and all the parts of every weapon are sitting in buckets, mixed up. Go one part goes with another part, oh, and really you have to go team. through all these buckets and put all the weapons together. A half a dozen, maybe more weapons that at the end you'll have completed, all put together, and then they'll function test them and make sure you did it properly. Once you get done with that, now you go into your platoon, which is the group of guys you're going to train and work with for the next year, two years, three years. So Those guys, done? for me, what I went through was the last step in the process of getting your trident. They decide when it's time for you to get it, your peers, which personally I think is the way to go. So it was a long road to get there, but well worth it in the end. And once you get that trident, now you are a seal but you're still earning your way as a new guy. And as a new guy, you're doing everything. And when you're not doing everything, then you're volunteering for everything else. And earn the respect of your more seasoned veteran guys that are at that team. Over time, usually, I, I probably didn't feel comfortable as an operator versus a, a new guy until about the somewhere between three and five years at the command. It takes a long time to not feel like a new guy, which is a good thing. It keeps every SEAL somewhat humble and always guy. learning, always Feels training, right. always trying to be better and never thinking that you are the best at something because there's always room for improvement. So are you tough enough, smart enough to be a Navy SEAL? Anyone so. can do anything. Yeah, and I know that sounds so cliche, but I'm the reality is, is if you, you truly get out of your and you've got the passion and the drive, and you can be whatever you want to be, certainly a Navy SEAL. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, that well, Navy Sue, I don't think I have what it takes me. I'm I feel safer sponsor. as an American. <laughs> yeah, well, that's for Because you got to do all that dick, boy. Shout out Imagine to you got 20 of them dudes busting in the building. Boy, you just don't move ball with us. <laughs> oh, my God, bro. They some, they they some destroyed, gorillas. Bro. They are literally gorillas, bro. That, that underwater thing was crazy. Hit you in the head. Get back Take right. your air off. Take your mask off. Tie your tube in a knot. We gotta get back and they said when the air bubbles out, so it's like, do they do that to you when you got no air in your lungs? These guys are tough, man. And oh they, my they, god, they some no. savages. Can y'all name somebody tougher out there? Let us know, guys. And we will do this, man. Uh, hit us on Instagram. Let us know in the comments who do y'all think is tougher and who, what video should we check out that's military. I want to see the best Navy SEAL video. We can do some other country too if you think your country like.
hit that man just send us the video man and uh we can get that in we love you guys man hit us on instagram if you have any questions any video questions we gone